The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, I'm giving you a complete tour of my home studio in 2021. Now, a lot of you who've been following this channel for a long time, you've seen me move between not one, not two, not three, but four studios. The first three studios that I had were in different spots in Los Angeles, but at the beginning of 2021, me and Kara decided it's time to try something new. So we packed up everything in California and we moved out to Las Vegas. Our new setup here in Las Vegas has a lot of the same equipment, but it's arranged a little bit differently. So today, not only am I gonna be showing you all the different audio and music equipment that I use, but I'm also gonna be showing you all the different video and lighting gear that I use to do my entire channel. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing I wanna begin with is my desk itself. Now this piece of furniture is called the Halo Desk by a company called Argosy and it's specifically made for music producers who have a hybrid setup. As you can see, there's space for analog gear and also some space that I've repurposed as a second screen for my computer. I'm using two DAWs right now, one DAW to record the mic and another DAW to actually play some music. And that's one of the big advantages to having two computer screens. A lot of the times I like to produce my beats in Ableton and then I'll have my vocal session up here in Pro Tools or maybe I'm recording a tutorial and I use Luna in the background to record my mic while I talk to you and mix vocals here in Pro Tools. I can do anything I want. Get up, put my mind to it. Dream it up and then I do it. The little screen that we have here under my desk that looks like a third computer screen is actually just an audio analyzer showing me all my loudness information or stereo information depending on what mode I have it set. I can do anything I want. Radar. No fluff, never diluted. Do anything I wanna do. No or EQ. So those are the three main things that I'm looking at, either my main computer screen, secondary computer screen, or my loudness readout while I'm producing. Here I have a MIDI controller. This is the complete A25. Speaking of keyboard, this is the, the wireless Apple keyboard. And instead of using the wireless mouse, I really like this final mouse, Air 58. It's a super lightweight computer mouse that a lot of gamers really like. And even though I'm not really playing games, I just appreciate the accuracy and lightweight build quality of it. So it's my favorite computer mouse in the game. And speaking of favorite in the game, I've been using these Audio-Technica M50X headphones. A little bit of wear and tear finally starting to appear around the ear cups. I've been using these every single day for four or five years and they're still working great, sounding great. That's everything here on the surface of the desk. I have this Argosy monitor arm here that you could see holding my computer screen up. And this allows me to move it in any way that I want, maybe pull it closer, push it back. And then uh, let's get into some of this analog gear here. Right now I'm actually talking to you through a lavalier mic clipped onto my shirt. I'm gonna be getting into that later in the tutorial when we talk about my microphone locker. And that's going through my preamp here, the Vintec X73. And we're just using a little preamp gain and a low cut. I could even uh, low cut my mic even more if you wanted to hear like a 220 hertz low cut would be, or no low cut at all. Maybe I could just keep it at 80 for this. And we're doing a little bit of compression too. Just like I have when I'm recording singing, I try and just aim to have like one dB of actual compression on the signal going into the Apollo. That's my entire analog gear collection. I really don't use analog gear for mixing. I just use it for recording. If my mic is getting used, my analog gear is getting used. But outside of that, everything else that I do is completely inside the box. And then above that, I have a power strip. This is a really cheap like Guitar Center brand one for my more expensive accessories that I have plugged in. 
I figured it didn't make sense to plug in expensive stuff into a cheap power strip, so I bought one expensive one and then one cheap one for everything else. And I actually have another power supply hidden. Oops, I forgot to turn on my green light. We're gonna get into this later when we're talking about lighting. I really like having these green up lights. Total vibe on the speakers. Behind this screen, it's not even attached to the desk. It's just leaning up here and it doesn't fall. I have another little power strip back here. Just a convenient like on off switch to turn, you know, this side of the desk on and off. Up here on the speakers, we have the Yamaha HS8s. As you've seen me talk about in other videos, these are actually here to keep my cats off of the expensive speakers. I had a really big issue a couple years ago where my cats actually put a dent in one of these cones. And the solution that I had was just to put a different pair of speakers on here so that they wouldn't touch the nice ones. Then as my B speakers, we have my Aventone mix cubes. Now these are a lo-fi speaker with no bass and no real high end. I like using these at the end of a project just to make sure that I balanced everything correctly. To switch between all three of my pairs, or I guess these aren't even plugged in, to switch between my two pairs of monitors that I have connected, there's a monitor switching switch right here on your Apollo. You hit Alt and it switches to your other pair of speakers. So that's a great little Apollo tip that I use all the time when switching between the monitors in my setup. When I'm tracking vocals, I just stick to my trusty headphones. 99% of the time, I'm just using these speakers, the ATC SCM25As. And just at the end to check my mix, you'll hear me using the Aventone mix cubes. Pretty much the cats are using these most of the time as like a step to get up to here. But that's all good. As long as they're not touching the expensive speakers, I'm cool with that. So that's the desk of computer monitors and analog gear. Down here below the desk is where we get to the real horsepower behind the entire machine. This is my 28 core Mac Pro. I ordered it with the maximum specifications uh, for everything except for the RAM. I got the lowest RAM and did that myself, save a couple thousand bucks. This is actually the fastest computer you can get from Apple at the moment. Until they drop a computer that can go faster than this with M1 processors in it, you're probably not gonna find me using an M1 computer anytime soon. On top of that, I know I could have used one big hard drive, but I think there's really something convenient about having a bunch of smaller hard drives. I really like these Samsung T7 drives, and I use them in different colors to help me kind of remember what's on what project. Corresponds with the colors here on my actual computer. And it's just a nice convenient way if like I go on a trip and we're just filming something for Kara, I could just take this hard drive, or if I'm going to Lucas Studio, I can just grab the blue hard drive, eject it, and I know it's this one right here. Very convenient to have everything color coded and I actually made a little TikTok on how to change your hard drive icons to match your hard drive better. So that's my computer setup. This computer is completely maxed out on the ports too. Let's see if I can get my handy dandy flashlight here. Boom, you switch it off the green color mode. There we go, normal color. Oh yeah, this thing is magnetic. I could just like stick it there and it stays awesome. So as you can see, we're using all the ports here in this computer. Both of my monitors are run off of USB-C. And then to extend the amount of ports that we have and plug even more things into this computer, I got two hubs plugged in. Just to make things simple, I'll put a, the text, I forget exactly what they're called when I'm editing, I'll put the text up on the screen. This is basically how I connect all those hard drives to one computer. And then here is my memory card reader for my camera and then the power supply for my microphone and preamp and a couple of other hard drives next to it. So that's all the gear below, around, on, and under the desk. And the next thing that I wanna talk about is what's going on around the desk in the room itself. Most of the surfaces that we could put acoustic treatment on, we did. We even went and covered, this used to be blinds, we covered this with a heavy blanket just to make that wall even more absorbed. We even went around on this back wall, up here on the ceilings, and on the floors, we've covered as much floor space as possible with heavy carpets. So it's not ideal for recording vocals. That's why out here is basically our mixing and producing area. And we actually have a second room back here through this door that we're gonna be talking about a little bit later. But no matter what size your room is, acoustic treatment is gonna make a huge improvement in how your mic sounds and how your speakers sound. And of course, to make it all look good, we wrapped these all in some LifeX LED strips. These have actually been sold out on Amazon for the last couple of years. We haven't been able to buy any more of these color strips. I'm not sure where they all went. As far as vibe lighting goes, I think you guys are really gonna enjoy some studio lights. I use this really affordable Amazon brand, pronounced newer or newer. 
Um, but either way, these lights are under a hundred bucks per light and they're super bright. You can change colors really easily just by twisting this knob green. They go through all the colors. I have this one over here set up as purple. Of course, got the jellyfish lamps. Can never have too many of those. Over here, we even have a ring light. This is actually the same brand, I think newer again. And yeah, this ring light just helps us look really nice in all of our content. And speaking of content, pretty much everything that we film gets recorded here on my red Gemini camera. I'm actually filming right now handheld with my Canon photography camera. They share the same lenses, which I'll show you in the next room. And then here is just a nice TV attached to a little Visa mount stand on the floor. But if you have an issue with stands tipping over, sandbags work really, really well. These TVs would always like tip over or I trip over a cable and I've, I've had to replace these TVs so many times. Ever since I started using sandbags here on the stands, I've never had anything tip over on me. So that works great for microphone stands. You'll see me using this later. Sandbags, great for keeping your stuff straight in your studio. I've also got this red camera on this little L-shaped bracket going across here and under here. You see this? This allows us to detach the camera from the tripod. Now you've got a vertical camera shot. And then you could just take your TV, flip your TV sideways, and you've got a really great setup for filming like Instagram Live, maybe recording a TikTok, very simple. Do your 808s sound like floppy trash? Are you tired of boring bass lines that just don't hit right? Introducing Disrespectful 808s, the all new collection of 808 bass samples so disrespectful you might just get offended too. Disrespectful 808s is available now only at Holoops.com. So that's everything here inside of Studio A. Next, we're gonna follow these cables out of the computer, down the hallway, out of the room, into Studio B. Welcome to our microphone room. Now in this room, you could hear we have much quieter acoustic treatment. And naturally, a smaller room would be much easier to acoustically treat. We very simply covered the floor with some more thick carpeting and the walls and ceiling with some proper four inch thick acoustic treatment. In here where it's really important because we're using our microphone, we put all the thicker panels. And what you see here actually looks like a separate desk, but this is actually connected to our main desk. This is the third screen for our computer. So this screen has a cable running out the door out to the main computer. Also, the mouse and keyboard that you see here are also controlling the computer out there. So this looks like a second computer, but it's actually just a third screen for our first computer. And of course, if you wanted to connect your laptop straight up to the screen and just use this as a second desk, you could very easily do that. But most of the time, uh, me and Kara are filming collab videos where you see me moving the mouse and you see her in the other room singing by herself. And people think that we're doing a remote session or something, but it's actually just two keyboards and mouses connected to the same computer. And then this screen's just far away from the computer in a different room. So that's the main purpose of this room is to serve as a vocal booth. I don't come in here to do the engineering. If I'm recording Kara, she's in here by herself, uh, but she could at least see what's going on on the computer screen exactly as I see it. She could even grab the mouse and move something as if she was out in the main computer. So that's my favorite, favorite feature about this whole vocal booth is the way the computer and the screen is connected for the singer to see what's going on. And they can hear me talking to them through a little talkback microphone. I usually just put a dynamic microphone out on the table out there so that I can easily communicate with the singer while they're in the booth. Another thing that I really love about separating the singer from the engineer and having like a vocal booth set up like this is while she's singing, I could be clicking the mouse and typing on the keyboard in the other room and none of that clicking is gonna end up in my actual recordings. Speaking of recordings, the mic that you've been seeing me use for the last couple studio tours is the Sony C800. Actually, let me grab my ring light, bring this over here so you can see it better. We've absolutely loved using this mic for recording vocals in all of our songs, vocal sample packs, all of our content and tutorials, but we also have a complete mic collection of other microphones that I'm gonna be showing you in just a couple minutes, but this is the main vocal mic that we're using. And of course we have the popper stopper pop filter going on in front of the mic. 
And then we actually have this on a really lightweight stand. And then down on the floor, I don't know if you could see this too well, but we have a black sandbag. I've actually had this tip over. Luckily it tipped onto the couch and it didn't damage anything. But that was the day I decided I needed to put sandbags down here on the stand. So that's our main vocal chain. And for the vocalists to hear themselves, we have this Furman headphone splitter just connected through XLR cable. You can see the input. And that just goes around the wall, out the door, into the Apollo out there. And as always, the Apollo pillow. Gotta respect it. Let me bring my trusty ring light over here so you guys can see the mic collection. So starting out with the first mic, something that you guys see me use a lot, the Slate ML1. This is something that Steven Slate actually gave to me to try out. He knew I was a Sony C800 fan and they claim to have some of the best C800 emulations in the game. And I tried it out and he was not lying. I actually have a full video about that. Something that a lot of people don't realize is it comes with a really good shock mount too. I've gotten much more expensive microphones that come with way, way worse shock mounts. This is a Neumann TLM 49. This is like a $1,500 microphone and this jumbled pile in the background that you see is supposed to be the shock mount. It looks like a finger trap. So putting it together is a puzzle in and of itself. And then when you finally get it together, boom, it all just falls back apart. The microphone itself sounds pretty good. I just don't feel like it provides tremendous value for 1500 bucks. Next, we have my MXL microphone. It's called the Patriot 990. This was only like 60 or 70 bucks. It's the second microphone I ever purchased. I got it because I needed a talkback microphone for when my singer was in the booth singing into the Neumann microphone. Now the next microphone we have down was actually sent to us. Sennheiser gave us this microphone and said, try it out and tell us what you think. This is a $300 microphone and we were super impressed. This is called the MK4 and it's a vocal condenser microphone. And we've been using it for a lot of our content and live streams when we don't wanna go through like the cumbersome process of setting up the Sony. And sometimes it's just an overall better look having the smaller microphone in there. So that's when we go for the MK4 microphone. Next, you've seen uh, Kara actually do a lot of live performances where she's singing into this Shure SM58. These microphones are absolute classics. You've seen them on stage a lot. They're actually really good for podcasting or in the studio. It's a dynamic microphone, and the huge advantage of that is one, it doesn't require phantom power, and two, it doesn't pick up much background noise, which can be very useful if you're recording like out in the main studio where the acoustic treatment isn't like perfect like it is in here. I actually prefer this one. Kara really likes the handheld one because she can like practice with it and rehearse her live performances. I really like recording dialogue with this one, especially out in the bigger studio where the acoustic treatment isn't perfect. This doesn't pick up very much background noise. This doesn't pick up very much room reflections and you can get right up close to it and talk into it. My second favorite microphone behind the Sony is the Shure SM7B. The last microphone that I have here is actually the microphone that you're hearing me talk to you through now. And this is clipped onto my shirt and this is a Sony ECM77B. It's actually the tiniest microphone you've ever seen. It's this little thing right here at the end of the cord. This is the microphone that you're hearing me talk through right now. It's not much bigger than like a grain of rice and it just clips right onto your shirt with like a little hook that goes over it. You can walk around and talk and your voice comes in very clear. You see my Apollo X4 right here. This is my favorite travel interface. And then speaking of laptop, I have my Razer Blade. This is my Windows laptop. Really the only time you're gonna see me using Windows is if I'm doing customer service for whole loops or this is really the only way for me to actually be able to like help and do product development and stuff for Windows. If it weren't for that, I wouldn't even be touching Windows at all. I really don't enjoy using it. That's my spare computer. Normally if I'm using a laptop, I'm using the MacBook Pro 16 inch that you saw on the desk before. This is the collection of guitar pedals. I have an Epiphone guitar. I'll put the model number up on the screen. And sometimes it's fun to just jam out through some actual pedals if you don't want to look at the computer screen. Uh, it's just a fun little way to kind of have plugins on your guitar or you can mix things through it. That's actually, this isn't a guitar pedal. This is a signal converter that takes the line level output of like your Apollo and converts it into the high impedance input that guitar pedals use. So that's the uh, reamp box. And then down here, we got the case for the Sony, which is empty right now because the Sony is up on the stand and all my cables. And that's the first half of the closet. Moving over to this side. 
This is more of our video closet. Let me bring the light a little bit closer so you can see better. So starting from top to bottom, this contraption right here is a Ronin camera stabilizer, but this holds up to like 10 or 11 pounds or so. So I can put one of these lighter weight lenses on my photography camera, which happens to also take great videos and run around and get really smooth shots with this. Right now I'm using my fisheye lens. I'll take a video with my phone so you could see all four of my lenses side by side. Right now, the lens I'm running around with is this 11 to 24 Canon, but my collection includes the 50 millimeter prime, 24 millimeter prime, and 100 millimeter prime. Those are all connected mostly through my red cinema camera. This is a 5K camera that I use for all my live streams, courses, most of my YouTube videos. Like I said, right now I'm filming this with my photography camera, which usually just lives here on the shelf, but I'm holding it right now. This L bracket, like I says, helps me do my vertical shoots. I also have a little L bracket up here on my Ronin, so I can like kind of put my camera sideways and then slide it on here. Uh, and then finally, I have my drone. And you guys actually haven't seen me use this on this channel, but some of the shots in Kara's underwater music video were filmed with this drone. Important stuff that we store in this closet, all my video gear, easy to grab, ready to go at all times. And that's the video closet in Studio B. So there's your complete tour of my microphone room and my main studio room. I hope you guys enjoyed my complete overview of all my studio gear for recording videos, recording music, and I'll include links to all the gear that you guys saw in the description. If you guys have any questions about things that you saw, leave it in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys next time in another tutorial. Peace out. Do 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 do